lift up your mighty and your matchless name, Jesus. Lord, we know, Lord, that in your name is every healing, is every deliverance, God, is every situation fixed, God, when we speak your name. God, I'm asking you tonight, Lord, to let your will be done in this service. Let the power of the Holy Ghost touch each and every one of us. God, I'm asking that the power of the Holy Ghost would move and that it would minister and that it would touch every hungry and hurting heart. Jesus, you see the needs of every person that is here tonight, that is listening by way of Revival Radio, that is watching online. And I am asking you tonight, Lord, that you would move and that you would minister, God, to each and every person. Come on, did anybody come to praise the Lord tonight? Come on, Jesus, we've come to praise and we've come to glorify your mighty name, Jesus. I know, Lord, that nothing is impossible. Come on, I want you to take your hand and I want you to lay it on your head. I want you to say, Jesus, cleanse every thought. God, cleanse my mind, Jesus. God, if there's anything that's separating me from being in your presence, any thought, Lord, God, that is in my mind, anything that I have allowed myself to think, God, I ask that you would forgive me, oh Lord, that you would touch my mind, that you would cleanse my mind. Come on now, take your hand and put it on your heart. Jesus, touch my heart tonight, God. Touch my soul. Create in me a clean heart and renew in me a right spirit, oh God. I'm asking you tonight, Lord Jesus, to move in my life, oh God, if there's anything, Lord, God, that is dividing me from your presence. God, I'm asking you to remove it. God, anything that's not pleasing, I ask that you would remove it. Now I ask that you lift your hands. Come on, if you're going to use your hands as instruments of praise tonight. Come on, Lord, I dedicate my hands right now. God, I'm going to clap in your presence. Lord, I'm going to lift my hands in your presence. Lord, I've come here tonight to glorify your name. Lord, it's not about me. It's not about anything else. But I've come to praise you. Come on, if you've come to praise the Lord right now, why don't you clap your hands? Come on, why don't you shout unto God with a voice of triumph? Somebody say the name of Jesus in this house. Come on, Jesus, we need you tonight. Jesus, we need a move of your spirit. Come on, somebody cry out the name of Jesus right now. Come on, Jesus, touch us tonight and move in this service. Hallelujah. Come on, can we continue clapping your hands? Come on, magnify the Lord with me. Let us exalt his name together.
building tonight that's just come to declare, God, we didn't come to entertain the crowd. We didn't come to entertain the person next to us, but we came to entertain your presence. God, we came to seek your face. We need you, Jesus. We're nothing without you, God. We just want you. We just want you.
time where you are right now, just make it personal between you and God. Come on, just you and the Lord. Shut out everyone around you. Make it a comfort from your spirit, from your heart right now. Lord, I love you. God, you have been so great towards me. Lift up your voice to him right now. Just get lost in praise. Hi, Hallelujah. That's the Holy Ghost moving right now. Don't give me in a hurry to move on. Lift up your voice, Tim, right now. Just begin to travail in the Holy Ghost right now. Come on. Let the Holy Ghost flow through you right now. Take you to a deeper place right now in prayer. Lord, we worship you. Complete surrender to the Lord. Complete surrender to the Lord. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Oh, we worship you, Lord. We love you, Jesus. We worship you, Jesus. We love you, Lord. God, you're great. You're greatly to be praised. I worship you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, for what you're doing right now. Yes, Lord Jesus, there's nobody like you, Lord. Nobody like you, Jesus. There's nobody like you, Lord. Hallelujah, Jesus. We worship you, Father. Thank you, Lord.
That's it. That's it. Come on. Just continue to talk to him. Talk to him. I love you, Lord. God, with all my heart. Young people, come on, let him hear your prayer right now. Hallelujah. Just pray in the Holy Ghost right now. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Why don't you reach over and begin to pray for your family right now? Come on, in this atmosphere of worship, surrender, let's just take a few moments and begin to pray for one another right now. Hallelujah. The Holy Ghost is moving in this place. Hallelujah. God, I surrender everything to you. God, bind our families together, Lord. God, let our families have revival. That's it. Just talk to him. God, give our families revival. God, give our family revival. Get our family revival. Give our family revival, Lord. Oh, God, touch my brother. Touch my sister. Hallelujah. God, we long for more of you. We long for more of you, Father. right now.
Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. We love you, Father. Thank you for what you're doing in this place tonight, God. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. There is a sweet touch of the Holy Ghost on this Memorial Day weekend. While the world looks back and celebrates those that have died for a cause. I am so thankful that we serve a Savior that not only died for a cause, but he rose for one as well. Amen. And you and I are that cause. I'm thankful that we have a Savior, that the grave could not stop him. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. There's a sweet touch of the Holy Ghost here, and good to see everyone in the house of the Lord this evening. I thank God for what I feel in this place. I believe tonight's going to be a life-changing experience for some somebody here. And um, let's just stay sensitive to the Holy Ghost tonight as we move forward. And uh, amen. Thank God for what we're, we're feeling in this place. I'm not here to greet all of our guests, but I do want our guests to understand that we are glad you're here. And we want you to know that you're in a Pentecostal, an apostolic Pentecostal church. And we, amen. We call ourselves Pentecostal because we want to identify with the first church. The church began in Acts 2 on the day of Pentecost. Before that, there was no such thing as the church as we know it. Acts uh, 2, on the day of Pentecost, uh, the church had its beginning. It's its birth. Amen. And, and we call ourselves apostolic because we want to preach and teach the apostles' doctrine. With all of the epistles following the book of Acts, all of those were written to establish churches that had had the same experience as they did in Acts chapter 2. And so uh, we want to use the teachings of the apostles as Jesus instructed in order to guide and to lead the church. Everything from the gifts of the Spirit, how we worship, how we pray, how we live our lives, how we communicate and love one another. Everything is dealt with in the uh, apostles' doctrine. And so that's why we call ourselves apostolic. Apostolic Pentecostals. The word Pentecost really just means 50, 50 days after Passover. And, uh, and, and we're going to celebrate Pentecost Sunday not too, not too far. I'm sorry, actually, next Sunday. Yeah, that's right. Seven days from now. It's getting close. Wow. And so next Sunday, we're going to have a birthday. Amen. We're going to celebrate. We won't have bounce houses, but we'll have bounce church. And we're going to, amen. The Lord's going to move. Amen. And, uh. It's, it's going to be a tremendous day, and I'm looking forward to the choir is going to be singing next Sunday night, and uh, I'm, I'm looking forward to that again. Amen. Ready for our choir to get back. Now, I'm not on the schedule tonight. I just grabbed a mic because I'm pastor. They, nobody, everybody's afraid to stop me, but uh, I, I, just, I just felt the Holy Ghost just kind of prompt me to come up here and say, why don't we just have church tonight? Amen. Let's forget about all of the, the events of the world. Let's just have a move of God. I believe that God is in this place, and we're already seeing victory here, and uh, great things are going to happen tonight. If you love the Lord, why don't you one more time put your hands together before Brother Harris comes. God bless you. You may be seated. I want to give you an opportunity to continue worship and giving of tithe and offering. Uh, our ushers are going to be bringing uh, the envelopes to the front here and setting them here. If you are in need of a contribution envelope, you are welcome while I am speaking uh, to come and pick those up uh, in just a few moments. When we receive our offering, you would bring it forward uh, on either side, whichever is more convenient for you to where you are sitting here in just a moment. Uh, if if you are in need of a contribution envelope, you can come get that now. We have kiosks that are located in the back of the building where you can get by way of debit card. And for those that want to give electronically online, can go to the Pentecostals.today, uh, click on the giving tab, follow the instructions, and give there. We want to take just a moment to welcome our guests that are here. Uh, if you are a guest tonight and you did not receive, uh, or your first time guest, or a second time guest, and you did not receive a card to fill out, if you would raise your hand, uh, we will have someone bring you a card so you can fill that information out. We want to get to know you, 
and uh, we're so glad that you are here. I think we have someone right here. If you could bring the card forward for them, please. I'm going to call some names of some first-time guests, and Pentecostals, are you going to help me welcome them? All right, that sounded kind of weak. Are we going to welcome our guests tonight? Help me welcome them. Amen. We're always excited for guests to come in town. First-time guests, just raise your hand. We're not going to ask you to sing or anything like that. Just raise your hand as I call your name. Lance and Audrey Zavatek. Okay, right over here. God bless you. Welcome to the Pentecostals. So glad that you guys are here with us tonight. All right. I love it. I love it. Amen. Jazlyn Marsh. Jazlyn Marsh. Right over here. Welcome, Jazlyn. So glad you're here with us. Allison Stafford. Right over here. Amen. Glad that you're here with us. Cody and Anna Davis. Cody and Anna, right over here. God bless you. So glad that you are with us tonight. Also, Caitlin Hicks. Caitlin Hicks, will you raise your hand? All right, right here. God bless you. Also, we have a very special guest, Desi Torres. Amen. We love you, brother. So glad that you're here with us tonight. Um, let me make sure I'm not calling you. Uh, Michael and Joanna Dixon. All right. God bless you. We also have the Rivieras uh, missionaries to Puerto Rico that are here with us. Amen. We love you, your family, so very much. Also, special guest, um, I believe it's Joyce and Lynn Church from Canada. Are they here? Oh, right here. God bless you. So glad that you're here. One more. This is good. Samuel Wilson. Samuel Wilson, if you'll raise your hand, right here. Samuel, welcome to the Pentecostals. So glad that all of you are with us tonight, and uh, we are a worshiping church. Amen. If you're, if you're not offended by worship, you're not going to be offended here. Amen. Just get with it. If you, whatever you feel like doing, if you feel like raising your hands, do that. If you feel like shouting for joy, do that. We serve an awesome God, and we're not quite around here. We are an apostolic church. Amen. If you'll stand with me, we're going to pray over the tithe and offering tonight. Amen. Pray with me. Father, we thank you for the opportunity that we have to be in your house tonight, the opportunity to give to the kingdom of God. We pray that you would bless the tithe and offering tonight. Bless both the gift and the giver. In the beautiful name of Jesus. Amen. You may come at this time on either side and bring your tithe and offering.
what I feel in this place tonight. It's a sweet touch of the Holy Ghost. And uh, hey, it is Memorial Day tomorrow. Most of you don't have to work. Some of you don't work anyway, especially all you young people. So, and, and hey, listen, why don't we just have church for a little bit? If, is it all right? You, you go ahead and be seated. They don't, they didn't know that, that I was going to ask them to do this, but um, I I think we have, since the choir's not singing, can we just take a moment and hear a couple of songs, maybe uh, one from Brother Matt Litton, and uh, then after him, uh, I'd like to get, have my wife sing something off her new CD. Would that be all right? She's got a brand new CD out, and it's a lot of original music. I want her to sing one of the original songs, whatever one she feels, and, uh, but, but first we want Brother Matt Litton to come. He's a full-time music evangelist and preaching evangelist. He kind of does it all. And uh, he was out pre or, uh, preaching in Dallas this morning. Glad that he made it back uh, this, for this evening service. They base here out of our local assembly. And uh, I want him to come and minister in song. Brother Litton, why don't you come? Amen. I like what I feel in this house. Amen. There's nothing like the touch of Jesus Christ. Amen. One thing I know, once you get in the presence of Jesus, you'll never be happy until you feel his presence again. Come on, once he touches you with his presence, 
You'll never be happy until you feel the touch of his nail-scarred hand again. Hallelujah. We threw an impromptu band together. Brother Caden Harris, key a G for Jesus, all right? You ready? Let's do it. Shackled by a heavy burden. touch i love i love those old hymns old songs amen god is so good amen thank god for the ministries that he's brought into the church i also want to mention brother um, brother and sister groman are also evangelists out of our church a very powerful and unique ministry i thank god you know we've got a lot of preachers and but i just love it when god raises up something unique and and he has done that uh, with uh, with so many here in this in this generation, this coming Sunday, kids, all the kids, I want you to hear me real close. I'm uh, this. Oh, kids are all over choir over next door with other squires, so the kids are not listening. All you parents, I want you to hear. As a matter of fact, if the kids are next door, if you're, if they're kids in here and you would like to go next door, they're having kids church right now. With, with Brother Lloyd Squires, the King's Clown, you just have to slip over there. But I do want to mention next Sunday, we, uh, Brother and Sister Groman will be ministering to all of our kids. And uh, for those of you that aren't familiar with the Groman's ministry, they travel full time. He does creation seminars. So um, 
you know, it, just so much information. And he, he has an incredible presentation, not only to adults, but also to children. He blessed our school uh, last year. Sophia came home a creation expert. And uh, she, could, she could prove that anybody that believes in evolution is, is wrong because she, she knows now. But uh, that will be happening next Sunday morning. And we're going to go ahead and do it Sunday night as well. So just like tonight, we're going we're gonna to double up and have kids' church on Sunday night. It's revival. We might as well have revival with everybody. And uh, so I'm, I'm looking forward to that. All of our kids will be uh, very, very blessed. And all you parents will hear a lot about dinosaurs and dinosaurs from the Bible and creation and all that kind of stuff. I don't know what he's going to talk about. I'm just saying. You're going to hear about it when you get home, when they get home. Amen. Praise God. I thank God for my wonderful wife. Now, she didn't ask me to do this, and she'll probably get upset with me for doing this, taking a moment. But I thank God for the wonderful wife that he's given to me. And uh, not only has she been a blessing to me in my life, now she's known for her singing. I get that. I get that. I, people used to ask me to sing, and the minute I got married... I tell everybody something happened to my voice because they don't ask me to sing anymore. I don't know what happened to me. They, they want her to sing. But she's known everywhere for her singing. But so much more than that, she did a tremendous job a couple of weeks ago. Whoa. Amen. God just amen me. Amen. He, she did a great job just a couple of weeks ago speaking on Sunday morning. And, and uh, she, she does a wonderful job. She is my best friend. And she is a wonderful pastor's wife. And I'm so thankful for the, not only the blessing she brings to me, but the bless, blessing that she brings to our local congregation. And so I want her to come tonight and minister in song, whatever song she wants to sing. I love my wife. distracting I don't know I can't decide I found I find it comforting that I'm inside and I feel safe it's kind of like a noisemaker which makes me feel a little bit sleepy uh, so we have a rain noisemaker but then I thought I could think of it as applause like heaven is like saying hey you guys are doing a great job you can make it and it's just kind of a little bit along the theme of the song it's not as um, probably as an exciting song as brother um, Linton just sang but this is a song that um, Savannah um, originally inspired and provoked the, the theme of. And when I began to write the rest of it, it was really inspired from our Shine Conference last year, Broken to Shine. And um, a lot of the experiences that we had come through with some of the loss that we had experienced and the hurt that we had been through and how much I didn't want to waste the pain of that experience. And sometimes when you're in the middle of a dark season, it feels like that's a dead end, that that's, it's over. And if we'll turn those experiences over to God, what seems to be the end of the road could just be a bend in the road. It's just the, the turning of the page can be a whole new chapter. And what would seem to be against us can really be for us. It can be something brand new and beautiful if we can turn it over to God. We can't really see the end from the beginning like he can. And it just seems like he was whispering into my spirit, it's not over. And some people have gone through, I don't know if it's financial difficulty or maybe divorce or death, or you feel like you've sinned or gone too far. That is a message of defeat. It's a message of the devil. God's word is a word of hope, of encouragement. You have not gone too far. It is not over. All you have to do is get back up again and put your life in the hands of God. And he has a beautiful future for you. It's not over. It's a very simple message, and I just want to tell somebody, whatever it is, if you'll just hold on to him, I promise, no matter how dark it is, it's going to get better. Amen. You can play the track. You don't have to play. i got a track. Hallelujah. When you feel in worth, I'll make your pain have purpose. My promise for your past is 
I'll raise you from the ashes. I saw the bitter tears you've tasted, but those wasted years weren't wasted. It's not over. It's not over. What seems to be the end is a way. stand together and lift our hands and thank the Lord that he can make all things new. Hallelujah. In our darkest days and times of greatest trial, God always brings us through it. We thank you, Jesus. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Praise God. Well, amen. It's, it's, thank God for what's happened thus far, but I'm looking forward to the word of the Lord. If you weren't here this morning, I encourage you, go back and watch the service. The Lord met with us. And our evangelist, Brother Greg Albritton, and uh, he preached the word this morning, ministered in a very deep uh, way. I'm looking forward to him coming tonight. Why don't you put your hands together and let's welcome Brother Greg Albritton as he comes. God bless you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We just heard through song two great words from the Lord. Hallelujah. How many of you are thankful that he touched you? Hallelujah, touch your life. Hallelujah, and then we're thankful that it's not over. Hallelujah, it's not over. God's writing the story. God's hand is in our lives. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. And if we get to it, we'll talk about that a little bit here in a few moments. I just want to again say what an honor to be with you all tonight. And um, 
just so grateful for the privilege of being with God's people. God didn't go anywhere the last three months, but I love being back with his people. Amen. Amen. And I'm, I'm so honored to be here uh, with you all at the Pentecostals of Katy. And I'm just believing in the next few moments, the Lord is absolutely going to minister on every aisle, to every pew, to every person in the house of the Lord tonight. I believe it. I just believe that. I come to church every time believing God has something. And I've been around, I've been around church. I'm 54 and I've been around the church 54 years. I was under a pew at two weeks old. I've been around a long time. I've never seen God miss. His laser-like anointing is amazing. He knows where you're going through. He knows where you're at. And he doesn't miss it by three or four rows or people. He can minister to hundreds in the same moment, on the same night, because he's our wonderful God. He's powerful and all-knowing. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So uh, just believing again for, for God to do what God does. I want to take a moment give honor again to Pastor and Sister McKee, uh, incredible leaders. I do not know where their energy comes from. I want some of their vitamins. If they're selling them, I'm buying. Amen. Uh, incredible leaders. And your energy for the kingdom is just amazing. Uh, your leadership, and I appreciate both of you tonight. Amen. And I, um, I said it this, this morning, but I want to say it again. Dr. and Sister Wilson are just so incredible and I ministered in her dad's church um, she may have still been a teenager or early 20s I was in my 20s had a tremendous time of revival connected through my pastor um, and her her dad were brothers our brothers and and so that connection uh, goes a long ways back and then met brother Wilson years ago and I'm thankful for the friendship from years ago but I also want to say in this la this last year something has grown even deeper. Thank you for stopping through Alexandria. Thank you for ministering to me. Thank you. I feel like we uh, have uh, sharing in the God journey, and I, I thank you so very, very much. I also, this morning, Brother and Sister Mayor, we're next door, and um, I gave honor to y'all, but now in person, I want to give honor to our friends. What, what incredible people they are. Hallelujah. 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 And Sister Debbie, I just got to take a moment. I said a couple of personal things this morning, but I want to thank you for your love and your friendship for our Jamie. And um, I can just tell you when God gave you the miracle of Gentry, I think she was just as happy as any of our three children. Amen. She loved you and thank you for your love. Thank you for y'all's love tonight. Amen. Just so honored to be with our friends Amen. Thank you, Brother Matt, for that song, to be with the leadership team, to be with the Riveras and the Grovens, different ministry all over this house. That's a sign of a healthy church when ministry calls your church home. That means you're an oasis church. You're not just ministering here, but ministries gain strength to go out. Take that as an honor and a privilege. That's a blessing. That is... An incredible blessing, and please save us a dinosaur tooth. I'll pay you double, but my boy saw one of those today, and um, and we want to be a part of that, and uh, I've got to get that new CD. Just a beautiful, beautiful song tonight. I'm so excited that my children are here. They are, you guys don't pay attention, they are gorgeous. Oh, thank you, buddy. I'll, I'll, uh, I'll pay you double, too, after church. I want to bless the ministry. Amen. You guys don't pay attention. They're gorgeous, okay? Amen. But I am so thankful my sweet girls are here. Or maybe pay attention. That's a good thing. Amen. I'm glad they're here with me tonight. And my little boy, Creed, they'll get me after church. Amen. But I'm glad they're here. Could you welcome my, my girls and my boy? Okay, I'll take my beating after church. I just embarrassed y'all. Creed, man, y'all may be seated for just a moment. Creed, man, come up here with Daddy real quick. There are sometimes he says, Daddy, I've got a testimony, and I want to help you preach. I want to testify, and today this boy wants to testify. Amen. Y'all heard about him a little bit this morning. Amen. But is anybody going to help Brother Creed testify right now? All right. You're going to do the God defeating the devil?
The devil may think he's winning, but he's not. God's defeating him every single second, every single minute, every single hour, every single moment of our lives. It doesn't matter that you're in a house or a hotel or anywhere like that. All that matters is that you're getting the Holy Ghost. You want to say hallelujah? Hallelujah. All right. I love you. Amen. I love that boy. Y'all be praying for us, man. Thank you for your love, as I mentioned this morning. Thank you for your support. Um, this, this week will be, we'll cross our one year anniversary in our journey, and we covet your undergirding, loving prayers, and uh, thank you so very much, amen. If we can stand for the reading of the word, I do feel ministry in the house so strong. I mentioned that a moment ago. God is here. He's with us. His presence is here. Psalms chapter 55, verse 4 through 8. I'm so glad the Psalms are the Psalms are in the Bible. Because David and the psalmist, they were just so brutally honest. They dealt with just about every emotion we as humans can face. And in this case, it doesn't take you long to understand. David just didn't like what he was going through. I want you to notice this with me. My heart is sore pain within me, and the terrors of death are fallen upon me. Fearfulness and trembling are come upon me, and horror hath overwhelmed me. In response to all of that, he said, and I said, oh, that I had wings like a dove for then would I fly away and be at rest lo then I would wander far off and remain in the wilderness Selah I would hasten I wouldn't take my time I would hasten my escape from the windy storm and tempest the psalmist here is expressing a strong desire to just be somewhere else, anywhere, but in the middle of what I'm going through. If I can just get away. Does anybody remember Southwest Airlines made it famous? Want to get away? Just get away. If I can just get somewhere else. He's saying in this reading, that where he was at was just too difficult. It was too much to handle. He described it as pain in the heart, terrors of death, being afraid and trembling, a storm even horror. He was probably saying, hurry up, God. Get me out of this mess. And he beautifully and powerfully described his feelings with the statement, Oh, that I had wings like a dove. Then I would fly away and be at rest. And I felt so strongly. It was on me so heavy last night. It was on me for the last few weeks, but last night settled so strongly on me to minister what I minister tonight. And our subject is wishing for wings. Would you say that with me? Wishing for wings. God bless. You may be seated. As you're seated, let's pray over the next few moments that we have together. Lord, in your name, we honor you. I thank you for every single family unit, every household represented here tonight. Whether that's a single young person and they're the only one from their family coming or a single adult in this house, or a family group, Lord. I thank you, Lord Jesus. I thank you, Lord. I pray anointing to every home, to every life. Let your spirit hover. Let it move. Let it work in Jesus' name. Amen. And somebody say amen. When we're going through a tough time, it is human 
nature to want to back out, get away, get some relief, not be under this stress, not be under the pressure. That's simply human nature. It's pretty common. And, and I'm up in Louisiana, it's, it's crawfish season. We love eating us some good boiled crawfish. But there's a term called crawfishing because that crawfish can walk backwards. And I'm, I'm a pretty good crawfish, I'm pretty good at crawfish walking. When I start going through a trial or a valley, I'm like, uh-uh. I know I told you I wanted another mountain, but, I, you know, I think I'm okay with the old one. I'll just stay here if it means going through a valley. Let me just back. I know I told you I wanted to go. Well, we're pretty good at crawfishing backwards. That's normal human even normal human spiritual behavior we don't like the pressure or the pain of that journey even God even Jesus God manifests in the flesh when he was on the earth in human form at Gethsemane facing Calvary facing the scourging facing what he was about to go through even Jesus in his humanity Express those emotions in the Garden of Gethsemane when he said, Father, if it be possible, let this cup pass from me. He, he was saying, if it's possible, I would love some dove wings right now to fly away and escape this. But what is a tremendous key and a huge key is when he said, nevertheless, not as I will, but thy will be done. He, his flesh wanted to escape what he was facing, but he surrendered to the purpose and to the will of God. Is there anybody in this house called according to his purpose? Is there anybody in this house surrendered to the purpose and the will of God in your life? Hallelujah, hallelujah. Then there's times we are going to have to understand his ways are higher. His thoughts and his plans for our lives are higher. And we can only see the now, but he sees the now and the beyond. He sees the now and the future. And sometimes seeing the now, we want to escape. We want to get away. We wonder if there's a way I could just be in the wilderness. Could I fly? Could I? No, 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 no. We, we want to. But like Jesus, when we can say, I'm walking with you, and I told you I was going to trust you, and I'm not going to let go of your hand, I'm going to keep holding your hand. I surrender to your will. So when faced with the challenge, of a storm or a trial or a season of opposition or a valley of deep despair. Our nature is to pray as David prayed. Oh, that I had wings like a dove. And today, just for a few moments, I would like for us to consider a different approach. And I felt the anointing in ministry can know what I'm talking about when you're preaching on a Sunday night but you feel God's presence weighing on you on Thursday and you're already in Sunday night because God's on your heart that happened last night that happened today in and out of a nap in between the services the Holy Ghost is in this house to minister to someone and I, I don't mean to be presumptuous, but I even felt like there are some ministry in the house that will receive words from the Lord in this service tonight. Something from the throne room. You're in your journey. You're trusting God. You're walking with the Lord. God's presence is in this house tonight. So I feel to minister for a few moments from a different perspective. It might have been more fair to me to title tonight's message, Stop Wishing 
for wings. Amen. Just please bear with me. I understand that there are times like David we wish for wings to strive. We just want to get away. But I believe that something's going to come in this house that's going to be a greater desire than wishing for wings. And that's a desire to walk with our Jesus no matter where he leads us, no matter what we walk through, to have the determination and to have the commitment. I'm walking with my Jesus. I'm walking with my Jesus. And my flesh would love to fly away. But if this is the road I'm walking right now, then I'm about to walk it. I'm, I'm not going to escape it. I'm going to. I'm going to walk it. Hallelujah. 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 I have a saying that I, I say sometimes, and that's just simply this. Amen. When you can't pray it away, and you can't fast it away, and you can't faith speak it away, at some point you're going to have to say, he's my God, he's my author, and if it's getting to me, he must be allowing it. And at some point, you just got to embrace it and say, okay, if I can't pray it away, God's letting it happen. And if I can't fast it away, God's letting it happen. And if I can't speak to it and it move, then here we go. In Jesus' name, I, I'm going to go through it. Matter of fact, let me just take out a moment on the devil. I'm sick and tired of the devil telling some of you that you didn't get your miracle because your faith was broken. I'm here to tell you, some of you that didn't get the answer you wanted, your faith is just as great as somebody down the line that got the answer they wanted. God in his sovereignty just allowed a different answer to come. You keep on believing. You keep on holding on. You keep on trusting. Your faith's not broken. I'm going to stay here for just a moment. But precious children of God, you saw God. You prayed. You fasted. And instead, I've had many instant miracles and many instant breakthroughs. But what about when you prayed and you fasted, amen, and you saw God and they still entered eternity? Or the healing didn't come? Or the direction didn't come like you thought it was going to come? And the devil comes and says, well, if you would have jumped a little higher, you would have got your miracle. If you would have hollered a little louder, you would have gotten your miracle. No, 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 no. You had just as much faith as the time the breakthrough came in an instant. God's just leading in a direction. I'm going to move on in a moment, but this is supposed to minister to somebody right now. If you have a situation in your last year, two or three, where you didn't get the answer you sought, and hell has tried to lie to you, no looking around. Could we just slip our hands to the heavens right now? I want you to get understanding. Somebody in here suffered loss. Somebody in here went through something, and the devil's tried to tell you, oh, your faith was broken. No, 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 no. You keep trusting in Jesus. Could you lift your hands to the Lord right now? God, whoever that is, I'm going to move along in a moment, but let anointing come right now. Right now, God's entrusting you. He's entrusting you. As proof text, it's just as much faith to trust him in a trial and as is when he removes it. As you go to the Hebrews, what we call the Hall of Faith, there's just as many people in there that were in there for what they endured as they are for that are in there for doing exploits for God, which tells me it takes just as much faith to endure as it does to do an exploit. Somebody's enduring. I move along. I love the old song. I'm going through. I'm going through. I don't care what the rest of the world decides to do. I've made up my mind. I ain't going to turn around. I'm walking with my Jesus and I'm going through. Stop wishing for wings. If you've done everything you know to do and the pressure's still there, stop wishing for wings and get a determination and an attitude that says, I'm going through. I'm going through. I don't care what the rest of the world decides to do. I've made up my mind. I've made up my mind. I ain't going to turn around. I'm walking with my Jesus. 
and I'm going through. Hallelujah. I'm going through. Somebody say it. I'm going through. Isaiah chapter 43, verse 2. I, I normally don't holler preach quite this much, but I feel like a balloon that they put twice too much air in. Isaiah chapter 43, verse 2. Could we look at it, please? When thou, just notice this, we sing it beautiful in song. It's beautiful from the word of God. This is so powerful. When thou passest, could somebody notice this word through in this one verse? You're going to see it three times. When thou passest through the waters, I will be with thee. And through the rivers, they shall not overflow thee. When thou walkest through the fire, thou shalt not be burned, neither shall the flame kindle upon thee. Somebody say, I'm going through. Hallelujah. Somebody say it with me. I'm going through. The psalmist David said it a little differently than prophet Isaiah, but it's the same message. 23 verse 4, that famous 23rd Psalm. Yea, though I walk, somebody help me, through the valley. I've heard this preached all my life, but when you're going through the valley, make sure you don't don't, don't call the post office and tell them, hey, this is my new permanent address. <laughs> I live in 123 Valley Street. Write it down. Send me my mail. No, no, no. I'm not going to build a house there. If I'm ever in a valley, I'm going through that valley. I'm going to come out. You're going to come. Stop wishing for wings. Get a determination. If God's allowed me to go through a valley, I'm going through. He said, yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. That word death is interpreted deep darkness, that oppression, the, the heaviness that can come over us. He said, I, I will not be afraid if I'm walking through the deepest, darkest valley. I don't have to be afraid for thou art with. Please hear me tonight. Jesus didn't promise that he would deliver us from everything. I preach deliverance, but he didn't promise that he would deliver us from everything. Well, nobody's running the aisles on that one. But can you notice from our last two verses, Isaiah and Psalms, through the valleys, through the rivers, and I, I believe that means through the flooded rivers like the children of Israel went through. No way to pass without him. Through the waters, through the fire. He didn't say he would deliver us from every shadow of death, from every river of opposition. He didn't say he would deliver us from all of the flood waters of intimidation and despair. He didn't say that he would stop every wave of evil or deliver us from every fire and intention of hell in our life. But you hear me on this Sunday night. He did promise that when we go through those situations, that he would be with us. He promised. Hallelujah. He promised. He promised. Amen. I, I don't know. God's not showing me or locating people for me tonight. Sometimes I know this is for her. This is for him. He show, th That's not tonight. But I know there's somebody in this house, amen, that you're in the middle of or you've gone through something and the enemy's trying everything he can. I'm telling you, if you're in the valley, he's with you. If you're in the fire, he's with you. If you're in the trial, he's with you. If you're going through the storm, he's with you. You're not Right there alone. So I have a question. I love deliverance. But if God delivered you from every valley, if he delivered you from every river and from every flood, 
and from every fiery trial. How would you ever know how beautiful it is to walk with him through the valley? How would you ever know how real he's going to show himself to you? If, if he delivered you from everyone, Brother Wilson, how would you ever know how he shows up in the fire and you come out and you don't even smell like smoke? How would he do that if he delivered us from every single one? Amen. I love every deliverance story I've ever heard, but I'm thankful that my God hasn't delivered me from every valley because there have been times when I didn't have a dime to pay my bills and God said, give an offering, and I gave an offering, and next thing you know, somebody showed up and said, the Lord told me to do this, and my bills were paid he showed up in the valley and said I'm your God and I'm your provider he's showed up and made a way if he delivered us from every single trial and every single flood and every single storm how would you know that he'll show up and in that moment when you don't know how there can possibly be a way he is the way maker and he becomes your way maker in the desert and in the storm and in the trial uh, uh, uh. Somebody just pray out in the Holy Ghost right now. There's anointing in this house. I'm talking to, preaching to people tonight. Hear me, it's happened to me many times. It's happened to ministry friends when we've shared stories. Something about our human nature, we talked about it earlier, has the feeling that when we get in that valley and it feels so different and the stresses are so different and the pressure is so strong that we're having to go through it by ourselves. God's not with us. If I'm in a fire that seems like the devil's getting the upper hand, there's no way God is with me. We feel alone. Does somebody nod an amen? When you go through those trials, you feel alone. When you go through those valleys, you feel alone. When you, but it just hit me recently. I know this is not some huge revelation. But if he said, when you go through the rivers, I will be with you, that means he walks through the rivers too. And if I go through the flood and he's with me, that means I may feel like I'm by myself, but I ain't by myself. That means if I'm ever in a fire, he's in the fire. If I'm ever in the flood, he's in the flood. If I'm ever in the trial, he's in the trial. If I'm ever going through hell on earth, he's sitting with me, standing with me in the middle of hell on earth. You are not alone. He is with you. Hallelujah. And so I, I just got to tell somebody. We just read it three times in Isaiah, through the river, through the water, through the fire, through the valley in Psalms. So I want to tell somebody, you're not through, you're going through. Can I say it again? You're not through. I don't care what the devil has said. You're not through. You're going through. Amen. Let a spirit come on you tonight. I'm going through because I'm walking with my Jesus and I'm going through. You're not through. You're going through. It's not finished. It's not over. It's not over. The Bible tells us that God is the Author, well, it didn't just say author, is the author and that means he's planning on writing the last chapter. That's his job. You and I gave him, does somebody have a pen I can borrow real quick? I, I didn't bring a pen. He, you and I, thank you, thank you, got a pen. We handed the pen to him. Lord, you're my author. You did it at an altar. You did it yielding your, your life to him. God, you're the author. If he's the author and finisher, then honey, it ain't over till my author says it's over. I gave him the pen. 
Uh, Greg Albritton's not writing Greg Albritton's story. I, I gave him blank pages and said, here, author, you write the story. And, and if you did that, I don't care how bad it looks today, your author holds the pen. And he's the author and the completion. Ha! One version says, the captain and the completion of our faith. Ha! He, he's the author. Y'all know this. I can go. I can go from Louis L'Amour, who was pretty spiritual himself. I can go to many different authors. The protagonist, if that story is twelve chapters long, the protagonist. Let's go back to my high school days when I'd read a little Louis L'Amour. The hero always had three bullet holes in his canteen, four drops of water left. There was sixty-two of the enemy coming over the hill, and he had two whatever, and and there was no way. I mean, the guy laying there with the holes in his canteen with two or three bullets left and guys on every side, he didn't know that his cousins had been riding on horses. The sockets had been coming because they heard there was trouble and they were just over the next hill, not in chapter 9. He's laying there. I remember one of my favorite ones. He's laying in the, the rush, like the bulrush grass on the side of water, and he's, he's got something, uh, some piece of grass that he made a straw out of. He's drinking water, and, and he's hiding in the grass. No idea how he's going to make it. But that author sitting at the typewriter has 20 cousins on horseback. They've been riding for days, and they're just about to come over the next hill because, you see, that, that hero of the story, he's stuck in chapter 9 and 10, but in chapter 11 and 12, the author says, this ain't where it ends. This ain't how it ends. This is not the end of the story. I don't care what the devil says, and I don't care what your circumstance may be saying. You're not finished. It's not over. Now, if the author says the end, let's go to heaven in Jesus' name. But it's not over till the author says it's over. He's the author and nowhere in the Word of God does it say the devil is the author. Please understand, if anybody in this room is a reporter, I'm not picking on you. Or I'm not picking on your profession. But I've decided if Jesus is my author, all the devil can be is my reporter. And I thought about it, sis, for a while. I thought about it, my brother, for a while. All a reporter can do is write, hear me out. If you're a reporter, you write what you see or what you research. Oh, he's down on the mat. Blood's coming out. That was a hard punch he just took. He's down. It looks like the match is over. I don't think he's going to be able to get up. He writes what he sees. They're going through a trial. They've taken some body blows. They're hurting so bad. I don't know if they can step back into ministry again. I, I just don't think they're going to have the strength to get up from this one. I don't think they're going to have what it calls the devil's just writing what he sees. And you may be bloody and sweaty and hurting and down, but all he can write is what he sees. And then he may can go find some files somewhere and do some research. And, and he, he can try to dig up some past because research is, you can't research the future, honey. You can only research the past. And so the reporter he's going around and he's seeing where you're at right now and he's writing and he's researching some past that's uh, but if a reporter talks about the future all he's doing is speculating because he's not an author he's just guessing he's just trying to figure it out ah. Ah. so devil if you want to report you just go ahead and report if you see me down <coughs> You can write about it if you want to. If you want to stir up some junk, you research some past. But when it comes to my future, the only one that's not speculating, he's got a plan. He's got a purpose. That's my author. He You're not through. You're going through. He is the author and finisher of your faith. Ah, I said, somebody just shout out to the Lord right now. Somebody just shout out to the Lord right now. Devil, you're a liar. Facts, you, facts, you don't own the whole story. Somebody just shout out to the Lord. I'm not through, I'm going through. Uh, 
Amen. Let's just lift our hands. There's a power in this house right now. Just lift our hands to the Lord right now. Lift our hands to the presence of Jesus right now. Somebody let Holy Ghost front row to back row. Somebody just let Jesus come. Let Jesus come. Let Jesus come in this house right now. Hallelujah. 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 Hallelujah, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. We'll go different directions as the Lord leads, but I like every person in this house because I felt it last night. I sensed it this morning. So many times services for us and the ministry ministers to us, but God has ministry in, in this room on his heart for a moment tonight. And he, man, and I believe God's just going to minister and touch your lives. But if you are called into ministry, you're serving in ministry in this church, or as we mentioned, basing out of this church, I just want you to lift your hands to the Lord right now. Just lift your hands to the Lord right now. Amen. Amen. If you're a child of ministry, I see our missionary daughter with her hands to the air. God's hand is on her. Just, just lift. Church, could you do me a favor right now? Amen. Because ministry is on a God journey. They're calling, and God works, and he moves. And sometimes they can't, can't, they can test the waters, but they don't know exactly what God's saying or doing. He puts them through the trial of faith and the test. Just lift your hands to the Lord right now. Pray over your pastor and your pastor's wife. Pray over your leaders. What a great ministry team. Pray over a young men in this church or ladies that have a hand of God on their life. You're not finished. You hear this preacher. I don't know exactly who. God's just giving me a general word. You're not finished. You're not done. God's not finished with your story. God's not finished with ministry through you and your family. Sister Church, lift your hands to the heavens right now. God's not finished with what he's doing in your life. He's not finished. In the name of Jesus, God's hand is on you. God's hand is on you. No matter what trial comes on you, you're not done. No matter what journey, a valley, or flood you walk through, you're not through. You're going through. Stop wishing for wings and just hold his hand and keep on walking in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Just pray a moment more, church. Pray a moment more, church. Jesus name if you're standing close to one of those with a ministry calling that lifted their hands and where you can would you extend your hands their direction amen they're no different or no better than us they just have a calling and they're trying to follow that to help me and my family get to heaven God's gonna lead them through some trials God's gonna lead them through some battles God's gonna lead them through some journeys and the Holy Ghost is just wanting to let some of them know in this house you're not through you're going through you've not You've not failed. Ha, ha, ha. God's allowing a stressor. God's allowing the trial. God's allowing the pain. Ministry on the platform, that's it. Just minister one to another. There's power in this house right now. God shaped you, and he's going to keep shaping you, and he's going to use you for his glory. He's going to use you for his glory.
Ah, yes, yes, yes. Congregation, this is okay right now. Amen. Even those, yeah, we prayed for ministry, but I want you, if you feel to, just extend a hand to someone close. If you're not comfortable with social distancing, just put a hand on their shoulder or just turn and let them know, I'm praying for you. Let's let the ministry of the Holy Ghost flow front to back in this room right now. God's hands on your family. Amen. There may be a family that the last few months have been so hard. Your finances may have been been hit. Amen. Your calling may have been hit. Things in your life may have been hit. You're not done. It's not over. God's not finished. God's not finished. I release the ministry of the Holy Ghost in this house. This is a sovereign move of God right now. I release the ministry of the Holy Ghost in this house. I release the presence of the ministering spirits, the oil from the throne room. Pray in the Holy Ghost. Pray in the Spirit. That's it. Cry out to the heavens right now. Hell, you're a liar. All you are is a reporter and a liar. You can only report on the present and on the past, but my author. He has my past, he sees my present, and he's in control of my future. He's in control of your
you, Jesus. Amen. Why don't you turn to begin to pray for somebody? This is how we're going to finish this tonight. I want you to turn to begin to pray for somebody near you. There's a strong spirit of ministry in this house right now. Hallelujah. Come on, turn around and begin to pray for someone. Hallelujah. Pray for your family. It's appropriate to find someone to pray with right now. Several of you have ministered to one another. I want you to find somebody else and just begin to minister to them. Amen. Let the Lord work through, through you tonight. Hallelujah. God, I'm asking you to touch my brother, touch my sister right now. God, you know what needs to happen in this place. God, I'm asking you to strengthen. God, encourage, Lord. Thank you, Lord, that you're with us through every trial. God, you promised to be with us. Hallelujah. God, I know you're with us in this moment right now. God, have your way. Have your way, Lord. Have your way in every line. That's it. Let the Holy Ghost flow through you right now. Just let the Lord use you. Come on. That's it. Pray for one another. Hallelujah. Intercede for one another right now. In the name of Jesus, we pray, Lord. Do a work tonight, God. Do a work in this place, oh, Lord. God, I thank you for what you're doing right now, Lord. God, minister to every heart. Minister to every life, Lord. Strengthen. Let the Lord work through you right now. There's deep moves of the Holy Ghost happening all across this room. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Oh, God, use the Lord right now. Do a work right now, Father. I pray that you work to them right now, Lord. Minister right now, Lord. Thank
thank you, Lord, for your goodness to us, Lord. Thank you for your blessings to us right now, Lord. God, we trust you. We need you right now. Have your way in this place right now, Lord. Minister to every life, God. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. We pray. Hallelujah. Yes, God. I thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lift your hands to the Lord right now. Oh, yes, Lord. Our God is awesome. I've turned it into praise. That's it. Hallelujah. God is so faithful. Our God is awesome. He is awesome. Brother Albritton was preaching tonight. The Lord spoke to me. He told me there are people within our church. You know, we often speak of ministry in terms of the fivefold ministry, but everyone has a ministry within the church. Everybody has a ministry. You're either fulfilling it or you're not fulfilling it. And Satan's greatest goal is to separate us from our ministry. Really, that, that's his goal. Because the minute you, he can separate you from ministry, he's not only destroyed one soul, but he's, he has bound everyone that you could lose. The, the, the effectiveness of what God's called you to do is stopped. And the work of God is stopped. Amen. And so sometimes the, the healthiest thing that we can do when we're going through a valley is to not let it stop our ministry. And yet, oftentimes, people begin to, you know, they're, they're facing things or they're even in a sort of a backslid state. I'm not saying anybody here is backslid. But even in a backslid, backslidden state, the first thing that people often do, they don't, they don't quit their job, they don't, they don't even stop relationships. The first thing that they will do is say, I've got to take a break on my ministry. And the truth is, the ministry is the thing that gets us through. 
It's the thing that delivers us. Amen. The prophet said that his, his anointing is what destroys the yoke. That anointing. The anointing doesn't come on us just to make us feel good. The anointing is always tied to the work of God. Every time. That's, it's empowering. It's what empowers us to do his work. Actually, there's two kinds of anointings. One is for healing and the other one is for ministry. So anytime scripture is dealing with the anointing of ministry, it's important that you know that ministry is the key to your breakthrough. Amen. There was Brother Jeff Arnold who was preaching one time and he talked about preaching from your pain. And he said the most powerful preaching is preaching from your pain. And as Brother Albritton was up here, and I, I realize this family has been through it over the last year, and they've been going through a whole lot. But what you're feeling in this atmosphere, and the victory, and the liberty, and the ministry you're feeling, is, is flowing through a vessel that's been broken that refused to stop ministry. And that same effectiveness that you witnessed here tonight is what God's wanting to do through you. So the worst thing you can do is shut up your ministry in a time or a, in a season of hurt or pain. But if you want to get out, keep ministering. Let that anointing flow. And that anointing destroys the yoke that the enemy tries to put on you. The enemy cannot hold on to the person that refuses to stop ministering. I've used this many times, but, but the patriarch Job, throughout all of his trouble, and all of his trials that he went through and all of the discourse between his friends and, and Job and God and all the back and forth that went on. At the very end of Job is the key phrase that I think unlocks the secret to what all of us need to do when we go through trouble. The Bible says that God turned the captivity of Job when Job prayed for his friends. Sometimes it's, it's not pleading with God, God take me out. You stay there. Oh, God, I don't understand why it's not about that. It's whenever you take your mind off what you're personally going through and let the anointing flow through you. And you start, I mean, think about that for a moment. Job is covered with boils. He's lost everything. His three healthy friends have been sitting around him for days complaining about him and accusing him. And this man who's got more problems than anybody else decides, I'm going to minister to those people. And sometimes you've got to stop looking at life and say, well, I'm going through it. Man, things are bad for me. You know what? God has anointed me, and the minute I reach out and begin to minister to somebody else, that's what turned the captivity of Job, and that's what's going to turn around your life. If somebody here needs to hear it, that God wants to work through you in the middle of your dark valley. Amen. Minister through your pain. Minister through your hurt. And you'll bring healing to somebody else, and God will say, that's what I was waiting on. And he'll turn your captivity in that moment of ministry. Hallelujah. Come on, let's lift our hands to the Lord right now. Lord Jesus, use the pain that I'm facing. Use the trial that I'm going through. Lord, somehow let me minister through it. Let me flow through it right now. Hallelujah. God, work through me, Lord. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, hallelujah, amen. I wish we could give an altar call. There's so many people here tonight. There's no way we could do it and maintain social distancing, and, and uh, we would get letters. No, we wouldn't. I would, okay? So, uh, so we're just, we're just going to end it in this kind of atmosphere. But I appreciate the ministry of Brother Greg Albritton this weekend. He blessed our church Sunday morning, Sunday night such a powerful way amen amen and, uh, and also this morning uh, uh, of course I preached the early service this morning but brother uh, Rivero or if you're, if you're from uh, Louisiana it's Rivera uh, he, he ministered this morning and uh, in Spanish and they had a great move of the Holy Ghost the, the, over there today so thank God for that the Lord really used them Amen. And uh, God is good. I love what I feel in this place. I'm always giving Louisiana people a hard time. I don't know what it is. All the Louisiana, just just quick survey. This is not spiritual law. All the folks that are originally from Louisiana, would you just kind of wave your hand? Just 
No, keep your hand up high. Don't move them. Just, I want to see right now, because I always say we got a lot of Louisiana folks. Stand up if you're sitting so, so I, can, I can see this. I want, I want you to look around. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 20, 20 23, 24, 25, 26. We love Louisiana. Yes. Louisianans. All right. We got a lot of Louisiana folks around here. All right. How many, how many Texas folks? You were Texas born? Yeehaw! What's funny is I saw some of the Louisiana folks saying they were Texas now. So, amen. God bless all of our dear brothers and sisters on the other side of the Sabine. Amen. Thank you for being in service tonight. To all of our guests, we're honored that you're here. I want to remind you, be here Wednesday night. We have a 6 p.m. service. For all those elderly, you're at risk, 6 p.m. We also have a 7.30 service. We'll see you Wednesday night, and it's going it's, it's gonna to be a great service. Brother Desi, good to have you tonight, man. Good to see you. Just uh, been up in Indiana. God bless you. You're dismissed in the fear of the Lord. Make sure you stop by the foyer, pick up a new CD. I think Brother Litton's even got some CDs, maybe, somewhere. Oh, yes, Lord. I don't care what the rest of the world decides to do. I've made up my mind. And I ain't gonna turn around. Walking with my Jesus and I'm going through. I'm going through.